Folks, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We have a mess to clean up today. You can see all this dead timber here, kind of in a precarious location. All right, you have a, a power line going through on the backside, a road on the front side. Dead trees in general are, are not something I really like to mess with a lot. So I called in the professionals to have this taken down. You may have seen them doing work in the background in a previous video, and it was essentially a, a get it down safely and I'll handle the cleanup from there. So that's exactly what they did. Dropped everything down, now's the time to get it out of the way. And I think for now, I'm going to probably just kind of chuck it off into the tall stuff here. You know, maybe I'll burn it or something at a future date, but uh, most of the stuff is really, is really dried out. Um, not a lot of heft. I mean, this is, you know, one hand lifting this thing up. So there's not a lot of weight here, um, but we're just gonna get it out of the way take it over there for now and then maybe we'll chop it up and burn it later on or, or, or do something else with it later. But job number one today is to get it out of the lawn. Okay, so this is a Brush Crusher BC4215. So you're gonna see BC4200 on here. It's pretty simple basically. So the 4200 does not have this middle set of teeth on the top and the bottom. It's just gonna have some cross braces that go in there and take up that space. So basically if you want a 4215, it's just taking out those cross braces and adding on the center sections of teeth like you see here. So the brush crusher does not use any other hydraulic or electrical connections, no extra hydraulics that are required, a diverter or a third function, nothing like that, nothing electrical. You hook it on the same way you would your bucket or pallet forks, that kind of thing. And the way that this works is this, this top jaw is gonna be controlled by the, the curl roll cylinder, all right? So imagine your bucket was on here and you roll it to dump it out or you curl it back to scoop something up and hold onto it. Same thing, this top jaw is what moves. The bottom jaw is essentially stationary. I can get it to move here. It's gonna be on a hinge point, as you can see, and these stops are gonna rest on the bottom side of the loader. Had a Kubota interrupting us. Kubota owners, you know. But as you can see, you have all these holes down here for adjustment. And if you reference the manual, you'll see why, because every loader's geometry is a bit different. And I did not adjust this specifically for this tractor. It was set up uh, for another machine, but I've got it set up right now so that the, the bottom jaw is fairly parallel. If you look in the manual, you wanna typically set it up so that when you have a full closure on here, you're, you're just kind of clamping tight against it and not putting unnecessary pressure against that. So there's been a couple random reviews on YouTube amongst all the good reviews. These random bad reviews seem to get all the attention, but I wanna go ahead and just briefly explain why that happens. Is if you have significant clamping force and you're not paying any attention to what's going on and where you're just allowing the tractor cylinder to, to really clamp as hard as it possibly can against that bottom jaw, you're gonna create extra stress around the back of this plate here. And I believe that's what happened and caused those problems for those couple of owners there that posted those videos. but. This design has been around for years and years and years. They've sold tens of thousands of these units here. I I've myself have sold over a thousand of them with really great feedback, really great results. It's not going to have every, it's not gonna have all the dynamics, I guess, of a traditional hydraulic grapple. Where they, they lack is if you wanna stack really high or if you wanna load into a dump trailer. Um, and essentially, because you can see this, this lower jaw being stationary, you can't just tilt the whole thing down and let it roll all off. But besides that, for what we're doing here, kind of just going along the ground, picking things up, moving from point A to point B, it's perfect for that kind of application. But again, that limitation is if you want to stack really high or dump over a high side dump trailer, that kind of thing, that's where you're going to struggle with a design like this and a hydraulic or maybe even electric grapple like uh, the WorkSaver Mini Grapple is a really good solution for that. All right, folks, so now it's time to get to work. I'll show you how this thing does, performs in a real world scenario with kind of a tangled mess here. Let's see if we run into any snags.
couple things going on on the back side of this tractor. Well, I guess this tractor in general, I've had this, this 2038 hour for a while. Um, I had it in at a local hydraulic shop. You can see I've got a hydraulic top link on here. My goal, and it still is my goal, is to try to offer hydraulic top links and eventually side links as well uh, for various compact tractor models. You know, with supply chain issues, it's just taking a lot longer than I had hoped it would do. So this is a custom-made hydraulic top link to fit a 2R series, like a 2032R, 2038R, um, anything with a similar stroke length um, that, and, and size machine that you have uh, on your three-point hitch category ones. So today we're not really utilizing this hydraulic top link so much, but we do have it hooked up to our Versa Bracket bundle. So this is our counterweight system. The Versa Bracket that you see on here is category one. It's quick hitch compatible, but you can see it fits directly to a, a three-point hitch as well. Uh, any category one, doesn't matter if it's a John Deere, a Kubota, or anything else. We have eight 70-pound suitcase weights on here. It's kind of hanging out way on that backside there, right? So this gives us as much counterweight as we can possibly have. And if you look really close, it's a used tractor, but this did come in with a couple of two inch spacers that are on there too. So we've widened our footprint a little bit. You know, I love wheel spacers. Uh, Bora used to be our channel sponsor and they are still a sponsor of ours as well. Um, highly, highly regarded. In general, they're narrow and they're long with a higher center of gravity. And especially if you have a cab on there, it just really gets tippy. And so adding wheel spacers, even just two inches, adds four inches to the overall width. It really adds more stability in an area where you need Taking care of, well, I guess a tree that would fall down on your lawn, for example. And I want you to pay attention to how I'm going through and grabbing these logs as well. Um, it's easy to get those lower tines to dig down in the ground. And, and I don't, I mean, I, the ground's, the lawn's messed up enough as it is. I don't want to make it any worse and rut it up and dig it up and everything else. So trying to take my time and just kind of almost feather that lower jaw to get right underneath the log and then clamp down around it. And so, um, there's no need to rush. You don't really want to rush with log work. We have, you know, stumps that kind of blend in with all the fallen timber and, and branches and everything else. Uh, you know, there's some stumps, uneven areas and ruts over in the kind of the tall grass area where we're dumping things out. Log work is not a speed application. It's like most things with a tractor. You're just taking your time. You want to get it done safely. You don't want to hurt the tractor. It'd be easy for a, a stick to come up under the undercarriage, you know, if I'm kind of driving over it and it gets wonky, splits in half and both ends go up and one sticks up underneath the undercarriage somewhere and, and that would end my day pretty quickly. And I've had a good friend that's had a stick go right up underneath somewhere into the transaxle. I can't remember where, but it was a couple thousand dollar repair on his John Deere, I think it was 3E tractor that he had at the time. Uh, I know of a couple other folks that have had issues too. So be careful going over all this debris. That's why I'm kind of, one of the other reasons uh, it's a good idea to go slow, I should say. Now, typically picking up logs and other debris, you want to try to center that load, and that doesn't mean it's always going to be picked up right in the middle, right? You have one end of the tree that's going to be heavier than the other, so you're, while it looks maybe off-center, you know, in the grapple jaws, it's, it's more about balancing the weight properly because you don't want to tip over to the side. And this ground looks fairly level, but there's still inclines here and there and, and awkward positions to be in, and again, that's why something like the wheel spacers make sense and having the counterweight on the back not only makes sense, uh, to offset what's in the grapple up front, but to also just help keep that center of gravity down lower and prevent rollovers. And so that's why at times you'll see me kind of plucking out a log or two just to separate it from the others, but then dropping it down and repositioning and grabbing it in a different spot to have that balanced load so there's no chance of a rollover. Now, luckily our drop point was pretty close. So this whole job, just kind of taking care of all this smaller stuff, only took about 25 minutes, you know, less than a half hour. And again, that's while filming too, which always takes longer. You know, and as I was dropping all those logs over there and, and kind of stacking them up, it dawned on me that, you know what? Maybe I'll just leave that stuff there and use that as um, some critter cover for the rabbits and everything else. It's always good to have some more hiding spots for them. Um, and it's kind of out of the way behind the other brush and everything else here. I want to get it away from the road front and I think it'll fill in nicely. 
And of course, a big cherry on the other side of the driveway. That was just a joke. That's well beyond the limitations of this tractor. Uh, we weren't going to be able to tackle that. I'm going to have to use a skid steer to knock that out. You know, a common question I'm always asked is what's the right size brush crusher for me? And this 4215 is the most popular by far that we sell, but that's great for the John Deere 1 series, the John Deere 2 series, John Deere 3 series. If you get to a John Deere 4 series, that's when I say start to consider that BC 4255. That's going to be built heavier, more steel, more support in there. It's a larger loader, larger stresses, and everything else that can be put on and applied to that grapple too. So that's when you want to transition to that 4255. It doesn't have that center set of teeth, but overall that's the right decision for the 4 series. All right, folks, so that is going to wrap it up for us today. I think that gives you a pretty good look at what this brush crusher is all about, the operation of it, how it actually does what it does. And this is not a new design. This has been around for years and years and years. I, I know well over a decade. Maybe it's been two decades they've been selling these things. A very long time. And again, so this is great for an, an application or situation when you don't have the extra hydraulics on your tractor or you don't want to go through that process of adding those on. They can be very costly to do so. It's just one look at things, right? If you want to go through that process, add on the hydraulics, there's a whole world of grapples out there for you. We, we've shown a lot of those in previous videos as well, all over our website too. If you want to get an electric grapple, they have those also. So there's there's different takes on it, different views. You just kind of have to prioritize what you want. This is the most simple version of it as well. So it's just easy to hook up and get to work. And I like simple things. It's just less chance of things to go wrong, which if you've watched my channel, it's hard to avoid those things going wrong. So uh, keep it simple when I can. But anyway, the brush crusher, they're gonna have it for John Deere Quick Attach. They have another version for Skid Steer Quick Attach. Now the Skid Steer Quick Attach, I always like to point out a lot of the loaders um, are going to have brackets for your stands on skid steer quick attach uh, equipment and so sometimes these brackets here these stops will well it takes more fine tuning so you adjust this bracket up and down to find that sweet spot where it's not going to interfere with those loader parking stands on there um, just pointing that out so you, you know that you got to make some more adjustments there but other than that folks things went pretty darn smooth for us today that's always a good day in my book we got this project done i'm gonna have to come back through I think with a rake and, uh, and clean all this up, a landscape rake will probably be the tool of choice. The downside is, is I did pack a bunch of this stuff down into the ground. Um, I don't think that the thatcher will be able to, to dig that out very well. It's, it's too heavy of materials also. So I think a landscape rake is what I'm going to have to use. It's going to cause a little bit of ground damage, but you know a lot of this damage has already been done. But if you're looking for a tractor tool, whether it's a brush crusher, a different grapple, a landscape rake, something for the front end loader or the three point hitch, we probably sell it and we ship all over the country too. I'd love for you to give us a shot. Check out goodworkstractors.com. And if you enjoy tractor videos, well, we do all sorts of those all the time. So product overviews, projects, tractor business stuff, you name it. So hit that subscribe button completely free. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Not that I'm not going to take the vlog and do it. I mean, I was going to originally take them in the back somewhere. They need, they need places to hide. <clears throat> you. If you're not your train, you out there. He was chasing after a bird yesterday.